have posted them online and they're very similar to last year they're you know broad based high level goals with a few additions um, that I can sort of briefly let you all become aware of but again they are online so um, we break our our goals into a few sections the first one being school budget preparation and rollout which is important to this group here and so as always we we're focusing on um, a student needs based budget and one of the things that we felt was important that we learned from last year was to incorporate into our budget um, areas that we recognize savings a lot of times we talk about what we're spending and what we're spending but there have been great strides over the last year especially to incorporate savings into that with shared services with the town shared services with Cape Elizabeth we've um, renegotiated our the teachers contract and all of the contracts have savings for health care so sort of highlighting that as well just to, to make sure everyone is aware of, of the big picture the next one is the just town and school budget process and timeline again that's more going to be focused here with this group communications and outreach we um, have agreed and, and Kate has worked with Tom to format our budget going forward in a manner that's similar to the municipal side which just makes it more reader friendly it gives sort of a background to the different departments within the school district um, it's information that we we have obviously on a yearly basis we just never have included it with budget papers so we will begin doing that as well um, and we're asking the leadership to highlight successes areas that they're looking to develop um, things that will be needed going forward in a long-term basis but also <coughs> in a short-term basis and then budget strategy goals have, have remained the same um, our goal as as a school board finance committee is to make sure that we're providing a budget that meets the needs of our students it's, it's very simple and then with the joint finance committee again we, we added that whole section um, this year but to talk about glossary of terms um, how are we speaking and are we all using the same language and does it make sense and can we agree that those terms are the way we're going to move forward um, and then of course planning for the budget in April which I think was a huge success last year and I think we can grow on that this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to add to that from the council's perspective the council has not officially formalized 100% of their goals but uh, they will become available the biggest goal for us for consideration uh, for in a way um, in essence we're asking for some assistance from the school board and one of those goals and that goal is uh, it's the second of three which is the fir to further enhance financial management in the budget process um, we've broken that down we went through a very um, um, I would say a, a more professional approach to setting our goals this year um, and bringing in a consultant to help us facilitate that to be more concise and succinct the outcomes we're hoping to pass the budget on the first vote we have incremental improvement in service delivery responsible and realistic budgets a sustainable tax rate increase have agreed to metrics for budget performance favorable comparison with other communities as benchmarks and ultimately eliminate the need for the budget to go to a vote and that's the school budget in particular because the town budget does not go to the vote there are some actions that we have highlighted that have become more of the quantifiable pieces to those goals uh, to determine and agree upon metrics that measure budget performance benchmarking with other communities we always had this trouble of uh, last year it was introduced the word cohort on the school side you know which what group of peers do we want to compare ourselves to and is it different from the school side versus the town uh, let alone when you aggregate it together is that even is that subset even different identify and review best practices from other communities as part of our process Start, strive for tax impact to be consistently less than three percent and there is a footnote um, that that needs more discussion it has not been determined if that is the correct metrics and there's going to be a part of today's agenda that will hopefully um, uh, culminate uh, to a recommendation to the Finance Committee of the Town Council which will then go to the full board mm -hmm. uh, focus on trends via the metrics and the dashboards um, look at the budget presentation combine revenues um, so that it's more of a um, w one municipal budget and not a school budget versus a municipal budget um, or municipal services budget and then uh, more accurate projections on property valuation increases over time 
a continued community budget forum with measurable responses and feedback on public input. It's a little bit broader, but there's some impacts in there that really um, the goal of last year was to start having this joint committee be part of that conversation where it was appropriate. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you for everyone being here. Um, Peter will be coming a little bit late. We're going to go through the roll call, but Peter Hayes is a member of the Finance Committee on the town side. He's a, a returning member. What's great with last year is that we, I really believe, and I think there is a consensus that we made big strides in how we not only uh, talked about the budget, but how we presented that budget and um, how we delivered it to the community, um, especially through the public forum and the success. We're going to talk today about um, the norms that we set up last year and if they're still relevant today. We're going to talk about the calendar and make sure that that's appropriate as well. Um, and then get into that conversation because there are some challenges when you, do, when you have employees um, that have very little time to be able to um, kind of run parallel with our conversations. Um, we have to provide some direction and that's the purpose of the conversation around setting a numerical value around the budget. Um, the big piece though is that, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, is it's about setting the framework not only for this year, but it's also about building upon last year so that next year is even easier and that we can finally get to a point where we're not talking about that baseline, you know, what is the, you know, what are the norms and the schedule and those kind of semantic things so that we can start talking about what are the priorities of the community. You know, um, what, um, where do we want our money to really go to over the long term and, and how do we focus on that. So this is, um, our goals along with yours kind of hopefully set us up for that so that we can really, and it takes a couple of years, you can't, um, unfortunately we can't achieve it all in one year and I think this is a good step forward. So I just want to say thank you to Jody. We've had a couple of chairman, what we call chair meetings with the manager and superintendent to get started. It's been very fruitful. Um, and um, for that, I, I would actually ask maybe we go through the roll call next, and that way we can recognize who's here, because there are some visitors that are at the table as well for the bigger conversation that are outside of our two committees. But um, uh, with that, on the town side, um, sometimes it's when you have small groups, roll call is really kind of uh, hard. Um, my name is Sean Babine. I'm the chair of the Finance Committee and a member of the Joint Committee. We also have um, Chris Chiazzo, who is a member of the committee, but also he brings great resources to this group because he was on your side, in your seat, mm -hmm. last year, so it's really nice to have him on board. And Peter Hayes will be joining us, I think, in about a half an hour, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, but he'll be here as well. And wanted to welcome uh, Will Rowan. Um, he is here, uh, not as a member of the committee, but as a member of the council. And um, that's what Donovan, Chairman Donovan, was not able to make it because he is out of town. Um, so, and he sends his best, and he's uh, going to be following up with us later about that. And uh, on, on the school side? And I'm Jody Shea. I'm chair of the Finance Committee on the school board side. And with me on the, from the Finance Committee is Carrie Lightford. She's a first year um, school board member. And Christine Massey, who also brings um, a ton of knowledge, has been doing this for many years. We won't count. Um, <laughs> many years. And then um, Donna Bealy, the chair of the school board, is also here joining us um, when we get to the larger conversation if needed. And uh, I forgot to mention, we do have staff. So mm -hmm. uh, just to mention the town managers here for <coughs> to represent to help us all, as well as Ruth Porter, the finance director. So thank you both for coming. And, and Kate Bolton. Kate Bolton from the school, um, finance director for the school department. I believe that Joanne Sizemore will be joining us. She's coming from another meeting. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Edwards will plan to be here, but then he was called out. <coughs> I heard that last night. So, great. So uh, with that, I'm, I actually don't have minutes to approve, or at least I didn't see any to do no. uh, We will going forward. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention, Jody, we had talked about this in our setup. We really want to express that this is a workshop style of meeting. Uh, last year was a little bit more formal because it was our first year. But this year we thought that we could get rid of some of that formality and really just have this as a workshop. Yeah, so I'm not sure if we even kept minutes last year. I don't I don't recall. I think we just used the recording. They were all recorded. Yeah, they recorded. We called that minutes, I think. Yeah. So um, it's very informal from that perspective. Um, right. And I hope that we continue that until all you guys get out of line. I'm not sure it's something you have to worry about. <laughs> um, new business. Um, uh, Jody, do you want to go over the norms for last year? So I wasn't a part, obviously, of, of creating these norms last year, but I think. Um, many, if not all of them, hold true again this year. And, and I think we're open to having additions if, if needed. 
So the norms for the joint finance committee meetings going forward, one, members will practice transparency and avoid hidden agendas. We will treat each other with dignity and respect. Listen first to understand and demonstrate respect and appreciation for the opinions and perspectives of others. Oh, I should have asked. Does everyone have a copy? I think everyone who <laughs> those of us who are prepared. I have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going paperless now. All right. Um, we'll respect the rules and unique responsibilities of the Joint Finance Committee meeting members. And last but certainly not least, bring a sense of humor to the table. Um, does anyone see a need to really change any of those this year? It worked well last year, including the sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you needed that. Sometimes you needed that. Well, um, I, I would recommend that we approve these for this year, and if there's any changes that can be brought up at the next meeting, that's okay um, with it. I'm yes, ma'am. I can't speak yet, but... No, yeah, of course, absolutely. That's why you're at the table. So, um, one of the things last year that I had I brought up at the time in which we were setting the goal was to um, have some minutes recorded that go out to all board members and council members. And I never received any of that, and, you know, I think... I'm, re I'm really, I have real positive thoughts about how the process all worked for us last year, um, but I think that was one missing piece that how do we ensure that the remainder of the council, the remainder of the board really hears all that was discussed here and without real time to see that happening. That's what I suggest. Even with notes, I think it's, it's not all encompassing. I think if somebody really wants to know everything that went on. I mean, because really even our notes from our school board meetings don't give you every bit of what happened. I think you'd almost have to go back to watch a video. Because honestly, it's not going to be in quotes of Jody Shea said, you know, so I mean, it would just be giving not is, even necessarily. Is it realistic, one. however, to think that everyone's going to go watch that, go watch these committee meetings? Well, I mean, I think from my perspective, it's, uh, you know, we have committee reports on both sides. The, the school board has committee reports. Mm -hmm. The council has committee reports. I think it's incumbent on the chairs to inform the group the best way possible. Um, I think um, so far, I, I, I mean, I know it's easy to say, yeah, we met and we talked about these kind of superficial things. Typically that, if... I think certainly from the council side, I would imagine if there are questions or concerns, they get addressed either to the chair or as a fallback, you can come back and look at the look at the tape record or, or whatever, whatever it is. I don't think, um, I guess for me, I'd, I'd hate to create additional paperwork and, 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 and documenting just for the sake of putting something in people's folders. I think if, the, if, if a counselor is interested, they'll, they'll see and participate. I'm not to speak for the, everybody else. They'll see and participate and, and pick that up. Um, putting a piece of paper with minutes in front is, I think, just something to add to the packet. Uh, yeah, and I think an it issue. doesn't necessarily need to be in the written format, but may, I think what happens is we have phone calls with each other and those calls may be limited to two or three people, so there's really not the full perspective for, for, for everyone that fits. So if it could be done by making sure that, you know, the representatives who sit here return to those meetings and, you know, give a full report. So there's a, a thorough understanding by everyone on both sides. That's, that's what I felt. <coughs> For me, was missing last year, and so maybe that's something for you and I to sort of talk about and figure out going forward. Does it make sense for us to, after this, sort of debrief and say, okay, what were the key points here that we need to make sure we bring up at our respective meetings? And maybe there's at our regularly scheduled meetings after a joint finance meeting, maybe there's a special line for in the agenda. Deep, you know, you would say, okay, Jody, can you talk to us about the Joint Finance Committee meeting? Mm -hmm. Instead of just, okay, committee reports where there's, you know, oodles of information. Actually, I'd like that up. maybe we could work on a key points memo. Mm -hmm. A one page, of, you know, kind of an executive summary memo of what was discussed. And, right. Um, Again, and it just keeps... I think that what we did agreed last year, the reason not for the minutes is that there aren't a lot of action items 
where votes were taken. It was more of that conversation and really to try to take minutes you need a stenographer. Um, so to kind of get away from that, but I, I like it to the transcript. Yeah, right. so I think, that, I mean, I like your ideas earlier. I think we could work on something like that. How about we do this? I, I think it makes sense for meeting efficiency to produce an agenda for every yes. meeting. At least that can be shared, and that might uh, provoke a, a question or a thought. And we'll add to the agenda maybe a wrap-up, final um, kind of takeaways, so the group can do a quick little debrief before you break up every time to say, what we've talked about today, just so we're kind of all on the same page. Right. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. And then share that wrap up out with. with the yeah, I think it's then uh, the responsibility of the committee chairs to report out to the whole. Yeah. Uh, but we'll add that as part of my standing plan. agenda item just so it's, we check in on that every time we break up. Great. We break up. And that will help too if there's additional information that's needed that we can. It'll be a reminder of what we need to do. Yep. Right. Create a to do list. Yeah. Great. Uh, moving on to the next item. So if by consensus norms are adopted, is that like them? They worked last year. Yeah. And I guess we'll go to the saying, but I'll say it anyway. Um, gotcha. We're all responsible to follow these rules, and if one of us steps out of line, you have the, you all have the authority to call that person up. Did we get a document to get that started? Everyone yeah. needs to keep each other on. When does the rumble start? <laughs> So the next item is really um, approving the proposed budget calendar. Um, so uh, Jody and I sat down and uh, with Tom and uh, George, went over the calendar and, and really put into place some key um, initiatives or key points that are really not movable. I mean, there's a little bit of flexibility with their movement, but there's some constraints around that. So um, the farthest boundary that's within that calendar is the referendum date, which is June 14th. That is also a primary election date, and so obviously we all are cost conscious and uh, want to have both the referendum on the same day as the primary to absorb costs and or to consolidate those together. Um, so that is the driver as far as what is the maximum outset, because then we have both by charter uh, for the town as a whole for its entire budget as well as um, policy within the school board about what are the timelines in which budgets going to have to be presented to their own finance committees to the you know school board for approval to the town council and so forth so as well as to the town manager as well and so forth so on so all of that was taken into consideration um, I'm not going to go through each of the dates but I, I think I can highlight um, really what I would believe are four points first is that is we're expecting that the town manager and superintendent will submit to the town council on April 6th um, the joint budget presentation which is considered the first reading uh, keeping in mind that a first reading just initiates the conversation. Um, while it is an actionable item to accept it, um, we are only accepting it, we're not actually approving it. Um, the additional date to consider, um, and then I'll do some highlights. Um, the additional date was the forum. Sorry, there's two dates. I, gotta, I, have, I have brand new glasses and I went from a single sided to double sided. I'm looking April forward to the forum. 27. 27th. April 27th at 7 is the budget forum. That, um, we're going to talk later um, about that um, process, um, how it went last year, um, if we can make any changes. Um, it went, I thought, very, very well. Um, and we, can, we all participated in that uh, discussion last year and hope that we do it again this year. The other one is the um, joint workshop. It's May 11th. The workshop is the one that we have between the, town, the full town council and the full school board. Um, and that's chaired by both chairs of the two bodies, and that's where we talk together, even though we've already done our work outside of that. It's then we bring in the other people. Kind of make sure, I think it's kind of a check-in to make sure that we're going in the right direction before we get all the way to the end and realize we don't have consensus on both sides. And then the last item really to mention is um, May 18th, which is the second reading in the budget vote. Um, I would just add to that, Sean, yep. um, May 4th is the public hearing. Sure, yes. A week They're ago. all very important dates. They are, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this will become, um, once we approve it here, we're going to forward it back to the uh, to the town council for final approval because they approve that um, or ask for their, we're going to recommend that they approve it. Um, there was some consideration about whether or not we could be more flexible and maybe have this start a little bit earlier, but there's some challenges with that and Tom, you know, from a professional staff perspective, maybe you can kind of comment about Starting the budget process yeah. earlier? Well, the earlier you start it, the, the squishier the numbers are. So, you know, we always want to wait as late as we can, but we also need to have 
ample time for budget review and, and now validation with the voters. So that's, that's really the determinant there. Beyond the charter requirements, um, <coughs> that really is what informs the schedule in, in large part in terms of within so many days I need to produce the, or present a budget and then you need to act on it. I think what was helpful last year, um, and we kind of did it as, uh, I think we did it in the joint committees, which was helpful, was cost drivers, at least identifying the vague areas first without necessarily honing in on, you know, specific line item details. But if we know, you know, obviously this year salt and fuel are not issues, but something along those lines, if we're seeing in the individual, whether it's on the town side or on the school side of, hey, this, this line item or this sector is kind of out of whack a little bit, we need to address that or need to be cognizant of that. I think that would help a little bit, maybe kind of frame where we're looking at for next year a little bit as yeah, opposed to that will come up under F. That's kind of a topic mm -hmm. for future okay. uh, one of these. Yep. I would note this, this agenda also, our schedule, um, calls for two budget joint budget meetings like this a month. And we're doing them on the first and third Thursdays. Second. I'm sorry, second, second and fourth. Fourth. With the exception of this month, the 28th right. is not scheduled as a uh, conflict with this room, and we didn't think it was going to be necessary to meet again you know, twice in January. Right. Um, and those are primarily placeholders, right? Because um, we noticed last year it was hard to sort of figure out how eight or ten people can all get together on short notice. So we felt like if going forward we had placeholders knowing, okay, the second, fourth Thursday at two o'clock is the joint meeting, we at least have that on the books. If, if there's nothing that needs to happen that month or that, that day, very well could be canceled. But it's at least there, so we all have it on our calendars now. Yeah, that again, that uh, item F on your agenda will largely inform um, how many and when you yeah. have those discussions. So it, to add to that, the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month are the Finance Committee meetings for the Town Council. So. Um, well, why that's important is because all of the departments are they are kind of aggregated. We're going to be changing it up a little bit. During those meetings is when we'll be reviewing all the budgets just as a town council finance committee. Eventually, the school board's budget comes to us as a department to the town council's meeting. So um, it kind of blends that into that process. But I think it's important to note because that will be an opportunity for the public to speak as well. Um, but um, this seems to work. And, you know, what I'm hoping this being the second year, is that next year we almost codify and say this is what our schedule will be every year, so it's not really something we have to talk about. It becomes, in essence, practice becomes policy. So I'm excited about this. I think this works very, very well. Any questions or? So for the for the committee members, um, you know, and this is, uh, you know, when we're talking about, I, I would like to get a recommendation that we forward to the council that we accept this. Um, are we all in agreement for that between the six of us? Mm -hmm. Unless you say no, I'm not going to actually ask for a raise of hand, <laughs> but I'll forward this to the on my lazy. side. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on my side, I'll yeah. forward this to the council um, with a recommendation okay. to the manager. Okay. Good. Anything else? No. I'll do a record keeping. Oh, do it later. Okay. Um, you know, there's one thing I wanted to mention, actually, I forgot, because um, it was really, really important. And it's on both sides. It's not one, but it's, I think it's more impactful having, although it was many, many years ago that I was on the school board, but it was it's relevant 15 years ago as it is today on the boat. I, mean, I think you called it the squishy, you know, the numbers are squishy. People need to understand is that when, if you start the budget earlier, the numbers have to be bigger because you have no idea where the number is going to come in, especially on certain things such as uh, labor contracts, health care in particular. I mean, there's so many other things that are so um, so unknown that it just, why go through that process if you know, because then you get criticized when you have a $2 million adjustment. Because and, and that's the way it was going, right. you know, just even two or three years ago. You're, you know, you're accused you of, earlier. you know, we're accused of fabricating the numbers, um, that we're just bloating them up for the purposes, but you have to because you have no idea, because how on earth do you want to underproject and then have to raise it because your projection is too low? And so, and the timeline is pushed back somewhat with the school validation vote because I think it only makes sense to provide enough time uh, for a potentially second vote. We have experience recently that uh, needing more than that. So, uh, we're now looking to finalize the budget by the end of May, essentially when we don't need a budget approved until the end of June. But by virtue of the validation vote, you need to kind of roll things back 30 days. So, all of that has 
has compressed the uh, budget review process. And I hope what comes out of these meetings as well is that kind of common theme of, you know, there is a there is a methodology behind it and there is a, a, a plausible explanation as to why we're doing what we're doing. It may not please everybody, but at least there's a mechanism behind it and it's not just arbitrary. Mm -hmm. That said, it's a calendar too, too early as, as it is. I mean, if, at the beginning of April, if we have, with the first reading, like, does that give us enough time to sufficiently unsquish those numbers? It has to be, um, and I can't remember the, which, I believe it's by charter. Um, yeah. charter and, and, that, and it's because the charter says that it must be approved within 30 days prior to the fiscal year end. We essentially work backwards from that June, that June 14th date. Yeah. Gotcha. And then um, some. I'll and provide you all the relevant charter sections. And essentially, I'm tasked with, with presenting a budget no less than 60 days prior to the end of the fiscal year. And the council must approve it within 60 days of me providing it. That's not a problem one. The school board policies uh, talk about much longer timelines, 90 days to 100 days, as I recall. And so that pushes us into April. But your presentation to the council has to include the school board's budget. Yes. It's going to be a complete budget. It's going to be right. a complete budget. Right. So regardless of what the school board's policies are, early prep, it's still got to hit your desk yeah. at a fixed time. The next time there's a charter commission, we may want to look at that just to kind of fine-tune fine that and give yourselves a little more flexibility in that regard. I think one of the things that, that kind of ties into what Chris was saying earlier is identifying the cost drivers that are going to really yep. be impactful. We can at the same time identify those things that are still in motion, mm -hmm. and we generally do that. We'll say, well, you know, here's what we think we're going to be spending on health insurance, but we haven't got our rates yet, and we will probably get our rates in another two weeks. So, so we can identify and label those things that we know are going to move. Um, so that I hope is helpful. And I think we we've talked about making that distinction even clearer, because we all know very early on, okay, we're not going to have our numbers from Anthem in time for that first reading. And so that number is sort of a look at history to figure out where do we think we're going to be. But I think if we do a better job in saying these four items are still in motion, they're not going to end here. What you see here is not where they're going to end. I think just providing information clearer may help with the um, conversation that happens after that first reading. And um, if, if the referendum, so on the referendum this year will be, do we continue to vote as a town? And if we were to stop voting, would that enable us to, to move that date later? No, because the yeah, end of the, because, no, because the charter is still, the charter is still there that says that you must approve your budget. Within 30 days. Within ahead. 30 days of the fiscal year end. So that's the driver, regardless of the, of the referendum question. Okay. Right. That's the driver. But I think to Tom's point, we've got some cushion in the, in the, in the calendar right now to have a secondary vote if, we, if necessary. Well, so June is kind of reserved for right. that fallback position. Right. So in theory, um, if we know we don't have to accommodate for that second vote and we know we'll have the decision at the normal time. You could probably roll it ahead 30 days rather yeah. than early April, it's early May that the budget's presented and yeah. adopted mid to late June. The trend requirement, there's a hard stop and must be, you must have a budget before the end of the fiscal year, June 30. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate. A council needs to approve it, otherwise the manager's budget goes into place. You don't want that. And I, <laughs> I think, though, the real the real question is is how how unsquishy will the numbers become between April and May? And and sometimes you know sometimes it it you know we 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 catch a break or there's that's built in. Sometimes it it does go right out until fairly on. I think I think what we've got to walk away from here though is an understanding of if it's a good faith estimate. What's that estimate based upon? Whether it's historical data or whether it's an assumption based on X. As long as we're comfortable saying this isn't a hard, fast number, and we all agree that it's a reasonable placeholder in the budget, or it's a reasonable expectation, I, I think that George and Kate and I and Ruth have talked about really uh, scrutinizing those numbers, those ones that we don't know yet, um, doing the best we possibly can to, you know, put a, a valid estimate there, but not overdo it either, because where we start is important. Uh, it's ultimately important where we end up, but if we can um, start at a more realistic place, I think it makes the whole conversation a bit easier. If you, um, so when we started, I went over, the, one of the council's goals is that we pass the budget on the first. So if we do our job, we won't have to worry and we'll, we'll have that comfort going forward whether or not the referendum question is there. 
Um, the second is that I did want to ask, actually, Ruth brought up a good point. Can you get an official, I know we had it last year, an official opinion regarding which budget actually is approved if it is not approved by the deadline? Because that has been misinterpreted over the last year mm -hmm. extensively. You mean phone what does it, what does it revert mean? back to? That's what, I'm a, that's what I'm asking for clarification on. I believe I have an understanding of it that's different than what someone mm -hmm. said did last year. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, because I believe it's the last one approved by the council, not the manager's budget. It's whatever is approved by the council. I think that's right. We looked at right. that yesterday. Yeah. So I, I just think that we need to have one clear statement about that since it was a contentious issue yeah. with some public people last year. So we, uh, we understand, and because we did get a legal opinion on it. Mm -hmm. It was just some contribution. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The other piece I wanted to mention is that um, we'd also had a brief conversation that if this is um, works um, again, that um, what will happen is that the town council will craft a policy because it doesn't have a policy regarding the budget uh, calendar that coincides with the policy that the school board has because it has like three policies actually, mm -hmm. like one major policy and then two subsets so that we're all kind of, um, it gets codified so that it goes forward. Um, so when that's kind of like the end result with this calendar is to kind of bring that about. When's the last day of Anybody else remember? I don't know. I don't know. What's the question? 20th, the last maybe? day of school. That Monday, leave. but it usually no. Well, without snow, yeah. yeah. Without snow, whatever day the kids leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because I mean, oftentimes that's um, that does move around. And, and obviously, for voter turnout purposes, you want to try and have as many people present in town as possible to get a good representation of what they want. So, mm -hmm. um, so moving, um, so I'll move that to the council. Um, the next item is C under five, um, establish a budget target. We've had a conversation, Jody, with me. Do you want to start? No, go ahead. Okay. Do you want to circulate that? Yeah, June 15th. Just yeah, June 15th without any snow days. So if there are any snow days, you can push it further out. What's being distributed is what, what Sean uh, provided as an overview. And I simply highlighted kind of the open question, which is that number in that sense. So um, to hut, just to kind of give a, um, a background to how this was established, I kind of mentioned it earlier. So the town council had a uh, team building, get to know you kind of session um, because we have two new counselors and this was kind of a, the first time that we really kind of had a chance to sit down and we talked about um, how we want to work together, what uh, some of our expectations are, um, some of the challenges that we've had at least over the past year as well as successes. And out of that came a session in which we invited um, two consultants. They're both actually Scarborough residents, which was great um, in having. And we had a session in which we sat down and said, let's bring some formality to our goal setting process so that it's a little bit more structured and uh, truly is um, a succinct goal. And then you have um, um, outcomes or expected outcomes and then actions. And the actions really become the measurements of whether or not we're successful. And so the one that we're reaching out to you and asking you being the school board, as well as um, in this session being a workshop is also the other members of the other council and school board members um, is w how do we set that measurement because it impacts both of us and the expectations when we develop a budget and that is the uh, second bullet which says strive for a tax impact to be consistently less than three percent you know so there's been a conversation for many years about you know um, how do we determine what we want to spend um, and it's been focused, some years it's been focused on just the tax rate. Some years it's been focused on um, the rate of spending. Um, some years it's just been, uh, or at least we've been told and accused that, oh, it's just an arbitrary number that we're just picking out of the sky and just hope that we hit it because there's so many moving pieces. And so we're trying to bring some, I think, some formality to that process and that conversation. And so um, at our level, we at least began that conversation by saying, what is the reasonable expectation of the community um, around um, spending and around and, w and which number is it? Is it spending or is it tax rate? And then um, what is that value and why is that value important? And so um, I don't want to speak for everyone that's on the council. The general consensus for them, I believe, is what's reasonable is, is probably an expectation of 3% um, on the tax rate because that allows for um, continuity of services that we currently have plus a reasonable level of investments. Um, 
that doesn't take into consideration prioritization of what is being spent within that dollar, and that's another bigger conversation that needs to kind of come to fruition as well. Um, and so I kind of want to <coughs> open that up, and because the goal, my goal as the chair for the town council's finances, is that I need to go back. Uh, there's an expectation on my side to go back with a recommendation of, from the whole committee, with input from non-committee members, to recommend to the council so that we can direct staff because they need that number to begin putting a budget together that's reasonable for us. So um, with that, I'd like to open it up to any conversation. So my understanding of that 3% number is that, that includes the, uh, that is the, the tax impact that's after you consider the fact that revenue is probably going to increase just based on general valuation growth. And so realistically, you're looking, if we're historically somewhere around 1.5% in that valuation growth, then we, you know, we're looking at spending increases of four and a half. Yes, you're saying yes, correct? Well, I'm not going to, I don't think I can agree to the spending. I'd have to say the number, but I'm basing that on. But, but yeah, this, is the a, this is a tax impact. impact. Yeah, tax rate impact. That's what I'm shaking my head. It's a all tax. All those factors. Yeah. So, it's, so for us, just to be specific, it says strive for a tax impact to be consistently less than 3%. So the tax impact is net of all the impact of revenues, all revenue streams, which includes increases in assessed valuations, um, and as I mentioned, an assessed valuation is one of our <coughs> um, issues that we're going to be looking at as well and how to read that and project those out, better project those out. So it is a net impact number. Because my initial feeling on this is there's so much, it seems like such an easy statement, uh, but there's so much that goes into that that I'm, I worry that it becomes confusing. Because for me, sitting on the school side, I'm saying to myself, okay, so if, special, if, if for some reason we have an influx of special service requirements that come down, it's a federally mandated thing, does that now cut into the opportunity to in, of any investment in the schools? Or There's just a lot that I feel like goes into creating a tax impact of less than 3%. That are unknowns. That are unknowns. And, and I think it's sort of a town council job to figure out, okay, it's the percentage that goes to education. You've talked about it. It's the, the, the pie. It's the what other costs, hidden costs are there that we can't foresee. How much we don't get from the state, maybe. It could be mm -hmm. another one of those things. But so there's so much that sort of goes into that easy statement. On the surface, okay, 3%. This year we're at, what, 2.6, 2.5%. So on the surface, yes, but my concern would be if there's, from the school side, if there's a, cha a drastic change in something we don't see happening. Enrollment, you know, the 99 homes down. So, so I think, it, you know, coming, uh, Coming my perspective, my personal perspective from the council finance side of things <coughs> is that this is a this is a um, a firm mark for revenue, the revenue side of things. That doesn't uh, it could impact our discussion on expenditures and how much is shifted towards education because if the pot is not necessarily um, never ending, then you do have a certain amount of fixed resources to deal with. I don't think that precludes our conversations of priorities of expenditures, however. So I would not want to personally make a correlation of saying a 3% um, limitation on a tax increase results in a 3% increases in expenditure on any department or any right. line item. Okay. So I, I want to, I'd like to separate those two out, at least that's my approach to it. I think it's a, it's a very, um, realistic and attainable goal for the council to set that tax revenue policy. I think that we can still have and still need to have that prioritization discussion about how we're dividing up that, that expenditure piece. We can't spend more than a dollar. So yes, we may have more dollars to spend, but the percentage of that dollar still has to go to where it's needed the most. And, and it's not just the school side of things either. I think if we have if we have an issue in a, you know, public works or police where we know we've got a shortfall we've got to address, 
then then <coughs> part of our purview as the as the finance committee is to make that adjustment and make that 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 need more more prevalent, if you will. And um, tax. I was just mm -hmm. gonna, I was right. going to bring that up because yeah. we were told last year that that was going to be. That's I'm not mistaken. It was sure, going to go up more in survey, aware right? That's going that I am. County tax. Oh, the county tax. Um, Last year, we made <coughs> we'll, we'll to believe that. that it was going to be quite substantial. We'll know that before I submit, your, submit the budget. Yeah. Yeah. So Peter had something. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'd just like to share maybe after <coughs> kind of sitting on both sides of the conversations last year, I think, and Tom, maybe you can share a little bit, or I can share a little bit, at least the process for us in the budget is a target was given. So, you know, a budget was delivered that sort of met this target, but it was easy for us then to have that priority conversation because what was delivered by the department heads is here's the number, mm -hmm. but beware that this number means we can't do X, Y, or Z, or here's an unmet need that we need. And, and the, fi you know, the fire department made a good case about per diems and for night coverage for calls, the police department made. So we were able then to make that trade-off decisions about where do we put the funds that we have, can we move dollars around. So on the town side, it was easy to understand from looking in, okay, what are the cost drivers, what are the unmet needs. Mm -hmm. It was a little harder to do that on the school side. So if we start, and I think the intent of this is just start at a place where everybody delivers sort of a consistent number, then you can have that conversation about, but this means we can't do X, Y, or Z or we really think we need to invest in whatever, and then it's easier for all of us to then understand how do we make those decisions about what we need to do. But when it comes in, you know, starting at a, at a, a much higher number, it's really hard to tease out what, what do you need, what don't you need, how do you have those priority discussions. So I found it very useful, Tom, the way you prepared mm -hmm. the budget process. To, and, and we had some of those conversations. Mm -hmm. I remember we made some decisions about staffing the fire department and some other things. So. And we're going to talk about the good frame. We're going to talk about the budget format a little bit later because some of that uh, focus, um, George and Tom have already talked about um, doing a joint effort, and that's coming up next after we get. And started. I just want to piggyback on that. I agree that it's it's absolutely a town council sort of okay. What do we you know? We've got the budgets from all of the departments. We need to figure this out. We need to figure out this puzzle. I think. If what needs to sort of be recognized maybe from the school department side is we've already done that part of the teasing out with our leadership. So when they come to us with their budget and say, we need, here's, here's our budget, we then sit as a board or a finance committee and work through some of those things and say, you know what, you're not getting the guidance counselor at the high school this year. It's just not possible. We need this over at the middle school. Or, so we've done that teasing out as a school department already, as a school board and the finance committee. So it's a little different with the education side of the equation because the budget sort of has a middleman, I guess, is, is the way I picture it, and that the, the departments from the school come to us with their budget, like the departments from the town come to you with your budget, and then we tease it out and whatever, and then it comes to you. Does that make sense? Yes. So some of that has already been done and that was one of our, in our goals that we talked about at the beginning was to highlight that better so everyone can sort of see, okay, the high school requested X, Y, and Z, but you know, Y and Z are just not feasible tonight in this year, so we're going to move it on or whatever. But I think we need to, as a school department, give that information to you better, clearer, so it's known. I, I guess in my mind that I, I, I'm, I, I'm really trying to draw the distinction and a clear distinction and correlation, not correlation, excuse me, a clear distinction between what we said is the tax policy and the mm -hmm. tax revenue policy versus what we look at for expenditures. I think I agree with you 100%. If we know what our revenues are, are going to be and we can project those out fairly accurately, which I, we, I, I know we can, then we know the size of the pie that we're working in. Right. That's very clear. That's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I guess I, what I would, I sense a little bit of, of concern and consternation is that means that every single slice of the pie is going to increase 3% across the board and is that enough to cover the expenditures? I, I, I'm not seeing that 
I personally do not interpret this as saying a 3% increase in revenue means a 3% increase in expenditures in every department. I see that as that, that our pie is bigger, mm -hmm. but we still have to make those hard decisions of how big of a slice everybody gets. Some slices might be bigger than 3%, some might be less than 3%. So I, I don't know if that maybe makes you feel a little bit better that I, I don't, I wouldn't interpret this as saying we're limiting, we're expecting all expenditures to be capped out at a 3% increase in every department. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the correlation. That is not what it says. It's yeah, careful, right. careful to avoid that. E exactly. That right line. Exactly. So I just, I just want to, I, I think I'm sensing mm -hmm. that's maybe where some of that consternation is that you're, you could have those issues on the school side where you've got special need services or something that increases because of people moving in or you've got something else that happens that results in your request for expenditures increasing more than 3%. Right. Then we evaluate that and, and look at that and say, okay, do we agree with your, your, your assessment and, and, and discussion? And that's why I think where the metrics conversation will come into play eventually. And then we, then we can, as a council, evaluate is that, is that the priority that, that we're focusing on? And why? And then we have that shared discussion. So I don't, I don't, I don't personally see this as, and it sounds like we all uh, can agree, it's not a limitation of expenditures by 3%. It's a limitation of our increase in the tax rate by 3%. So where are you going to end up after the long run up process yes. of deciding what your priorities are? Right. Then yeah. I think it's up to the group, or in particular, Sean here. He's going to press on Sean to explain that to John Q. Public, because yeah. John Q. Public, all they see is 3%. Yep. I don't want to see that come above 3%. You know, but what they don't understand is that this might not be, but this might be more than 3%, but this could be less than 3%. They don't the one thing I really want to make sure, uh, let's pay attention to what happened last year. I mean, last year was the best example. It happened prior years as well. I think there was a good process, far improved from prior years, you all came together, there were some tough discussions, but the ending point I thought was pretty healthy and the, the council passed a budget. The huge disconnect is when it went to the public mm -hmm. and so you're, you're fooling yourself if you, if you don't think the tax rate's important to them. And I think it's vitally important for you to have some conversations on, and you're far more knowledgeable about all the pressures on this budget than John Q. Public, but I think you need to have some conversations up front recognizing that at the end of the day, that's important, and you need voter approval. Oh, right. So, no doubt. So to suggest well, we don't establish anything, I think is, is No, I think what she's saying is if the school budget yeah. comes in at 4.5, right. does it then become the conversation then focuses on, well, why didn't the school come in, in where they were supposed how to? We have told them to come in. <laughs> but I think we all agree around this table that this is a tax impact, not a school board, you need to come in with a treatment. Well, right. right, but that's not... What the community's been asking for and what they deserve is some predictability and stability. Yeah. I think everyone would agree, and, and I, I think we've, we've got to strive for that. There's a lot of work to do to get to that point, for sure. You know, and, and I think, you know, I think, you know part, one of our goals, too, is to do a better job of communicating all things we're talking about. But I think if we put out an expectation that the overall tax increase was going to be greater than X, whatever that number is, and if that's what gets delivered, then I think that takes a lot of the angst out of the public. I mean, if we deliver as a group what we say we're going to deliver, and that gets to your point about how do we make those decisions about allocating the pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if the, I mean, at the end of the day, what they care about is their tax rate. Right. And, and what I, I think if, if we set an expectation that we're going to have X and we come in at X, and, it, and even if it is a little more than X, if we have a clear explanation for them why it's more than X, like changes in state funding, right? I think they understand that. Right. I think it's when they, you know, it's when everybody has an expectation at the beginning of where it's going to be, right. and then it comes in at something else. That's when you get, and the only thing they can express their opinion about is the vote. So I think if we can do a better job of setting the expectation, whatever the number is, we have a better chance of trying to pass it on the first round, which is what one of our goals is, is trying mm -hmm. to do. So. Um. So, um, <coughs> question, how did you come up with the 3%? Where did that figure come from? It's based on two things. Um, pretty thorough analysis of 20-year expenditures in Scarborough and some statewide uh, analysis that actually uh, Dr. Arntwistle put together. 
uh, and also a, a very good understanding of what our year-to-year -year growth evaluation is. Those two factors alone give us a sense of where where we've been historically and and what sort of uh, not only level services but what sort of growth could be supported with that sort of metric. So in looking back like say five or six years, how close was the town to the three percent mark? The last I two years have been below three two point below. yeah, two yeah, point two point two. So two last point year was two point five six, the year before that was two point two five. But the year before that was 3.55. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, that's 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 I don't have it here. Yeah, and again, I, yeah. we, we sort of have talked about it in the, what did you call our meetings with Common? Chair, chair, chair meeting? Um, we talked about it there. Happy hour. <laughs> so <we're looking laughs> back, you wish. And like it hour. seems reasonable. My, my hesitation is. The interpretation. Well, I think I mean, part of it is, is really the state that we're not going to start here. The reality is, we may not we may not start here, and I think that's a big disconnect. Is people see the number and they fixate it on it, and in the next three months you can't get them off that. Uh, the reality is, starting early in you know in, in April with a lot of uncertainty, we're probably not, not. That's not the starting point. This is all about where we expect to end after yeah. you do your prioritization and and your numbers get higher and all of those sorts of things. So that's part of the message is to say, oh. this is where we want yeah. to end up. <laughs> right. may not be where we start. So to, to Donna, um, I think your question is very good because it's hard to determine because then you get into uh, your own personal perspective about valuations and data and, you know, the same set of data can be interpreted five different ways by ten different people, right? Um, whether that's three percent, four percent, or five percent, the budget process should determine whether or not that is needed, and the referendum process determines whether or not the community really wants that. And I think that the conversation last year, in particular, proved um, didn't prove it gave us at least some gauge to at least understand where the community's appetite was. So that's why three percent um, is reasonable to me, <coughs> based upon last year, because it does allow for a reasonable rate of growth and investment in the community because it's not just about level services. At least not in this, I, personally I'm of the belief that we are completely opposite of what we should be in this economic cycle that we're in because it should be a period of investment and maybe even investment greater than 3% rather than this constant perception of um, we are still in a recession, we don't have the economic recovery. People that are bringing that forward are absolutely wrong and I think excise tax has proven that. Um, state income taxes in, uh, is proving that all of these yeah. indicators are proving it. So that's a, that's my own personal editorial on that. Um, so I'm looking to the budget process to validate whether or not three percent is part of that, and it's going to be in their presentations because we're going to be able to see with a three percent rate. Here are our basic services, and here is what is being invested in new dollars in both of our budgets, um, and we'll should see. Um, but then again, I hope that regardless of what that number is, both sides look at optimization to realign resources um, that better suit what we're trying to deliver because that, that changes over time too. It's not just what we did last year, it's the same thing we do this year. Hopefully we're looking at, you know, do we change the composition of the workforce that's on the municipal services, <coughs> whatever that might be. And you know what, the school's constantly going through right. their programming and yep. saying, hey, you know what, yes, we've been doing this for the last five years, but you know what, if we did this instead mm -hmm. with that same funding, we can do this in a more efficient or better manner or whatever it might be and you know one of those things is just just a reference Peter. point um, <laughs> looking at the last 10 years of tax rate history experience three occasions over the last 10 years tax rate increases have, have exceeded three have, 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 have. have seven times they've been three or below yeah, yeah I, and I, I just I want to be real careful here because there's a, you know, we, we are starting to mix a little bit with the revenue side versus the expenditure side and drawing that correlation and while there is a, there is certainly a, um, you need to have the revenue before you can spend the revenue of course. Um, I, 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 this statement really focuses, the 3% focuses to me on the revenue side of things and if it's predictable and it's sustainable and it's something that, that um, you know, John Q. Public can look at that and say, I know my taxes are going to go up 3% uh, every year, and that's something that I'm comfortable with, or not comfortable with, at least it's predictable. Um, the challenge I think we'll have as a committee is once we do that, that 
Um, and I, I don't disagree that we need to do that. I think the challenge is that it takes away one of our mechanisms for dealing with uh, uh, expenditure challenges. So this puts more pressure really on the, on the town finance committee yep. to really kind of look at how that pie is being divided because instead of saying, look, uh, you know, we can give everybody a three or four percent increase and it just keeps going up, then we've got to look at that and say, we've only got X amount coming in, which we need to control that. We need to be able to predict that, and that's what the public's going to see. That makes it more challenging, I think, for, for the finance committee on the, on the town side more so than the schools, because you're going to report out your, my expenditure needs are X. The revenue side is beyond, it's not beyond your control. You need to be aware of it, but it's not really something you're going to be able to impact through operation. The other thing I would, um, I'm, I'm, cautious of is that we're assuming that all the departments are at where they need to be right now and we're only doing marginal, sustainable, normal increases to maintain what we're at. I think the discussion really needs to be had of are our departments really at their maximum or at their most efficient or at their best right now? And if they're not, what's the plan to address that, whether it's you know, it's, it's incremental investment in across the board evenly, or whether it's focused investment on schools one year, next year, and then public works or something, do we take that approach of cycling through the departments, or do we come up with a better long-term funding plan, if you will? So I think the 3% is, is, from the school's perspective, I think it, it gives you an understanding of where we're coming from from the town finance side of things of what we're looking at for revenue policy. I, I wouldn't, and, and that will be part of the discussions I think we have in the group and you need to be aware of that when you're forming your budgets, but if your expenditure needs are greater than 3% and you can articulate that and you can show that with metrics or something that we, whatever we agree mm -hmm. to in the future, I think that is basically giving you a better case in front of the finance committee to say that's where the priority spending needs to be. And we don't have to assume that. We can look at the data and say, okay, that's what we were going to measure, that's what we've agreed, that's where we want to be, that's where we need to make the investment and now. Or that's where we need to make part of the investment now. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get too, from the school perspective, I, I wouldn't get too hung up on this being the the limiting factor of what your budget needs to look like moving forward. I think to, to your point, Peter, we, it's part of that common message coming out of this group of really explaining what this goal means and what, what, it's, what it's going to do so that we don't have the confusion of, of people thinking that that's an expenditure line and all the expenditures are going to be kept to 3% or below. So we've got to we've got to really communicate that of the impact to the town council, the town individual is going to be three percent. That doesn't mean every department has to come in at less than three percent expenditures. Is that fair? Or is it fair? Fair. Well, and an operative word you have here is strive for. And basically, you're saying it can't go beyond two point nine. Well, nothing's right. nothing's right. cast in stone. Less nothing's set in three. Right, but nothing's set in stone. I mean, right. I think there yeah. could be very good reasons that it's three point three. Uh, we don't know yet. Right. So it's part of the, and again, part of the thing that we, we talked about in our goal setting, which I think is important, is differentiating between a goal, an outcome, and an action. Right? A goal is, is to me, the goal is we want to further enhance the financial management and the budget process. That's a process. That's where we ultimately want to be. How do we measure that? And what actions do we take to measure that? I think this is one of those actions that we look at, and if that's what helps us get to the goal, great. But if we don't achieve that, but we can achieve the other four action items, and we can still hit our goal, then I think that's that's successful. Uh, Donna, just you know, I agree with you. I don't think that's the optimal word. The optimal word that should be removed is uh, words are less than, and the reason is because last year we could have predicted what the net result was before we knew it. Mm -hmm. but it's whether or not we wanted to take the risk because you could go to 3.5% mm -hmm. and, and we would be at 3% based upon what happened after the budget was approved. Right. Um, instead, we're at 2.5, 2.6. Mm -hmm. So it's whether or not people have the tolerance to take that risk to say, we're going to approve at 3.5% because we know that net, cross fingers, but we know the net's going to be less than 3 or, or darn close to 3. So 
based on well, things that happened yeah. typically after. Which is just as, been but it's just as historical is, as everything else that we're looking at. So right, if we're going to look at historical right. tax rates, which are exactly what we've done, you can also look at historical after approval effects. Right. That you can also, but it's about changing people's opinions and attitudes and tolerances around accepting that and being comfortable with it. That's going to be hard. I think it's gaining trust too, because we've got. I mean, that's part of this is the whole trust factor. If people don't trust that we're making informed and correct decisions, they're they're going to be more apt to take it out on the school right. budget if they don't understand, because that's their only venue. So if we could do a better job expressing why we're doing what we're doing, how we're doing, um, and it and it makes sense, then you know that's. Yeah. So what do you need from us? So I'm I'm looking for uh, I guess consensus or buy-in that it's okay that I can recommend to the council that we've talked that we're kind of all in agreement that this is a reasonable goal for us to begin with. The goal. So were you planning on taking out the less than since you said you're not comfortable with it? And I don't. So know, maybe that's not fair of me to ask you that. No. So I, like no, that. I'll tell you. So I'm comfortable in, uh, from this committee is recommending how it is currently written. I'm going to make my own individual arguments at the council level when we finish our goals to take that part out, but I'm not unhappy if it stays in either because I still am going to make my own fight and arguments around the budget as we go through it. Okay. Nothing too drastic from what we're talking about, but I have my analysis. But uh, if you as a group feel strongly that right. should be worded a certain way, I think the council yeah. would be interested in a recommendation yeah. in that regard. Well, I agree with Sean that the lesson was the thing that stuck out to me. I had sort of in my mind and from our discussions, my thought process was to strive for tax impact to be consistently around at whatever the word was. I was not no more than no more three percent. I was not well, what's the I was difference? not predicting less than three percent. I mean, I, I get it. But again, that's right. it's semantics, it is, and, right. and that I'm comfortable at that three percent number for a tax rate increase if that's what. You're asking from us. No, yeah. I'm not saying that we. I want to come in just to make it clear. Yeah. Come in at um, four percent, unless we believe the true after effect, which is primarily, by the way, the, it's purely only with the assessed valuations. It's just we can't influence the assessor in what he sets at. We kind of guess at it. They guess at it, then we get the final number. But I mean, we can look <coughs> at historical impact post and determine what might be the impact. There's a couple of anomalies. I know one year. It was a huge anomaly a couple of years back um, that you try to level out, but and so I'm not recommending four, five, six, ten. No, I know. Yes. I, you know, to me, it's it's whatever the data can support, and it's never. I don't think it's going to support a four percent increase. So one of the three and a half, three and a quarter. So using the word around kind of encompasses yeah. that maybe that little bit of risk that you're asking maybe the citizens to take, depending on what the state well, value is going to. I mean, the town's yeah. value comes in at. Around three percent could be higher, could be just a smidgen lower than that. I I, I kind of like the again that's when I don't want to debate this right now. I like at or near three percent. Yeah. You know, I mean because right. it, it it gives you again r keep in mind this isn't this isn't the hard and fast goal that if we don't hit this you know none of the budgets pass and they don't you know I mean it's an, it's a factor but it's not what we're going to measure the success against. It's not the only thing that we're looking at and measuring against. So I I think the you know we if if. To me, less than or add or more than is a semantics because the number is an, an average number anyway. So, if we're, you know, I mean, if it, to me, if, if you're gonna, you know, if it, if it's more comfortable wording it differently, I, I, I think the intent is still there to get sustainable and, and predictable tax increases. But when you talk about the interpretation of it, mm -hmm. first thing you're gonna read about this is uh, if yeah. you come in at 3.25. You, you didn't meet you, one. You didn't meet your goal. Mm -hmm. You're abusing the people of the, of the town because you're making them pay more, even though the net net mm -hmm. is still less than three. Because mm -hmm. has anybody talked about the fact that yeah, we approved uh, three percent, but it went down to two point five six. No one's coming in saying, oh, great job, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, but that needs to be recognized as part of the budget process. So, but Sean, one of our one of the actions was to try and more accurately right. project the yes. valuation increase. Right. So hopefully. <coughs> I mean, for, what, for, what, for whatever that's worth. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get tied up in words, Smith, but I, but I think whatever we end up doing, we need to think about can we clearly communicate yes. so people mm -hmm. understand it and they don't think we're trying to, you know, right. so however we word it, right. needs to be clear that someone, our constituents, can look at it and say, okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not only that they understand it, that they accept it. Yeah. And I think yeah. there's an important piece here that's a disconnect. I mean, all of you have a much better understanding of what that means in, in practical terms. We're asking 
Joe Q. Public around their kitchen table who doesn't really know <coughs> anything about this to nod their head up, well, I, I guess I can live with that. That sounds, that sounds reasonable. That's, that's the smell test. That's the one that matters, frankly. <coughs> that's where we failed in the past. So unless I hear, um, and I'm not I'm going to do this before Christine gets back. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, with four counselors here, I think I've heard um, proper direction, and I'll have them to bounce it off, because I'll make the recommendation that we're all comfortable with this, with a change from less than to a, a different uh, word, personally, add, around, whatever is, you know, fair. Yeah, whatever's fair, but it, it drives the point. So I'll make that recommendation to the, to the council as part of that. Well, thank you. I did want to re uh, recognize, thank you, Ms. Seisman, for joining us. Not a, no, not at all. Thank you very much to so, uh, so the assistant superintendents here. So, uh, motion to adjourn. Sorry, we are running late, um, and I know some of us yep. have planned on 3 o'clock, so I'm not rushing anyone, but if you need to leave or yep. anything, feel free. All right, yep. <laughs> Before we go to the next, I just want to observe by bringing this matter to this joint group, that's a huge step. Yep. I mean, in the past, I've heard great frustration from the school board saying, yep. this is being imposed on us, we don't have the involvement. Well, here, here's your opportunity. So mm -hmm. I credit Sean for having the idea of not taking it up just with the uh, town finance, but broadening the conversation because you're affected by it. And I think having the conversation here and sort of hammering it and beating a dead horse helps get that message across of, of what this means and, and what we're thinking and you know it can only help the more it's talked about the more it's communicated effectively it can only help. Excellent thank you very much everybody. Uh, next item is um, process improvements for 2017 but I'm going to turn this over to Tom sure. and yeah, we'll make sure it work of this. Uh, just to recap time. We last year we brought on the joint presentation, which we'll do again, as was mentioned. We think that's a, a great way. We'll continue that. And the budget forum is obviously another important step that we brought on last year that we'd like to do again and improve upon, actually. New for this year, um, and Kate is handing out uh, something we've called a budget portal. I think a legitimate complaint we heard last year was there was no, I won't say trusted source, there was no clear source of budget information. We'll host it some, we'll host it some. It was didn't always agree. agree. <laughs> didn't always agree. So Kate and Ruth and George and I have committed to each other that we're going to have a kind of like essentially be a web page, but both the town site and the school site will be linked back to this one, and it will be the single repository of budget information. And I know a huge frustration of Kate and Ruth's is that through the budget review process, they are constantly producing new stuff to answer this question, that question, and the volume gets unbelievable mm. sometimes. Mm. It's kind of like today's agenda. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so part of it is to work with the webmaster to construct the site such that those things can be categorized and kind of archived and found if people want to drill down to it. But the stuff that's um, current and, and um, appropriate to look at will be front and center. So uh, this is just a quick little initial mock-up of what the page might look like and it needs more work, but um, it's already underway. Well, the hope is that we'll be able to navigate to this. If you are a school person and a parent and you're used to going to the school website and you go to our budget page, there will be a link to the shared yeah. page. If you're a town citizen and you don't have a connection with the school but you want to find out, there will be a link from the school side. So any person who comes in looking for budget data will hopefully work their way to that shared space. So will this, will this page be the only place there's budget data? Is that what you're? Yes. I think once that. we get into the process and we have this ready, that's right. going to be the plan so that we don't <laughs> have to post it 15 different places. Yeah, that's or great. Yes, like one stop shopping. And will it be static or will it be, could people post like questions and answers type things or is that a later? Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that piece, kind of an interactive or keep communication piece. I think we did say to Sean at one point, uh, Sean uh, Bushway is the webmaster for the town and super guy. Right. I, I, I think we did say that we might want to uh, have that be the place for the budget forum questions. Remember last year we had sort of a write in your question piece. So uh, that was one of the things that we talked about. It wasn't yeah, sort of an open ended piece, yeah, but yeah, yeah. beyond that. And maybe there could be maybe there could be just a, a hot link to you are in Sean's email. <laughs> 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 to, 
<laughs> Some email. You know, but, oh. but, but I've seen effective websites too that if, if there are repeat questions that come in a lot, you get an they they get get a frequently asked yeah. questions. Yeah. So it's not an open forum, right, right, right. but you, you try to capture what might be a common question and then have sort of an official response. Because I think what happened last year too is that there was some confusion, so the answers being given to questions really varied too, which kind of set people in different ways. The more we can force them here, and have information, I think it's great. I think this is a great idea um, with the questions coming in. Also, to have uh, something up front stating that you're not going to get an immediate response. Mm -hmm. yes. So people yeah, are not waiting for that immediate yeah. response, but you know, we're taking your questions and uh, processing them. And I, yeah, and I think additionally to that, um, just only because I'm thinking of a recent email that we got requesting information that is going to be bigger than what a lot of people think are just simple questions right. because the amount of time for research to answer the question thoroughly is more expensive than what, so there needs to be some type of disclaimer or some type of protocol around um, what is um, a simple question that can be answered versus one that needs to go through either FOIA or that's way more yeah, expensive. The question can be simple, the answer can be far more complicated. Yeah, yeah and, and, and they people don't realize yeah. that. Filing right. data or what yeah. have you, it's not readily available. But so I'm wondering if you could do, uh, you know, um, Maybe not, may, maybe not necessarily static. Um, we're just having all the questions come in. I mean, if you do have a link to either a somebody's web, uh, excuse me, somebody's email or a, a general email just for this, where we could go through and kind of somebody can go through. I know that's always the challenge of who can do that with the time, but where you can kind of split out that simple yeah. question. We've gotten this ten times. Now let's post the you know the answers to frequently asked questions not necessarily the depository for all the questions coming in, because if something does come in that's a little more complex, that's not going to be able to determine unless people are at least no. monitoring the website. Someone's from staff or council or the board is monitoring the email site saying, hey, this question came in, it's a little bit much now, so you still got to respond and all that other stuff. I did so just work with Sean um, on creating, the school board's looking to create a newsletter, third try to charm. And, um, <laughs> and he created a, a separate email for us. So it's newsletter at scoverschools.org. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's budget at scover. I mean, you know, someone needs to monitor. You still need to monitor. It could, it could right. take on a life of a job of its own, frankly. Right. And mm -hmm. this budget forum is a tremendous opportunity, one that I'm not aware of another community even offers for yeah. that sort of question and answer. Mm -hmm. um, and those answers can be far more depth. There we can really start to understand there's some similarity of this question. We really need to provide a thorough um, And I mean, response. we know a lot of the questions. Like, I, some of this we can do ahead of time. I and mean, we, we know some of the frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. We talked about that a little here, bit here. In, in school finance when uh, we were talking about the budget format, which is the next thing we'll talk about. But a lot of these questions that come up, like Chris said, they're, they, they're repeat questions, but we tend to go off in little piecemeal responses to people. Yeah. If someone sends me an email about something, I'll respond to that person, and then the next person comes along and doesn't know the answer to that question. And, and so I think our hope with this is that we will have an opportunity to streamline that work and not to be just sort of, you know, question pops up, quick right. answer that one, put out this fire, put out <coughs> that one. But to do it in a more systematic way so that more people can get that information than just the person who happens to think of that question and send me an email that way. So I think it will be a vast improvement, still a work in progress, but we'll have it up and running. I mean, I'd like it as a repository for the, for the certainly for the uh, forum questions. We need to have that anyway because we, we, were, we were doing that last year. But so. I think what can be automatically posted is the, as, as far as, uh, they're pretty relevant no matter what going forward. They're pretty substantive questions. Mm -hmm. The questions that were asked last year mm -hmm. should automatically go up and be accessible and immediately highlighted because, you know, the questions, uh, who are the, um, who's paid over $100,000 generally doesn't change significantly over one year to the next. You know, um, even though it didn't give names or positions, at least it provided an answer. Um, and so maybe they can find that answer already within a question that was asked last year. So if we were going to, to follow up on that, Sean, if we were going to go through some of the documents that we did produce last year, I know that on the school department's budget page there's a bunch of yep. stuff, you know, that I was planning to try to distill into the 
some of it into the budget document itself so that it's more centralized. But if there are things that you folks think are of value that we could just resurrect and put onto this page directly, that would be something that we could think I about. would recommend that we spe specify that it's the 2015 budget form and that if they have more questions, because right. the numbers uh, might change or the information right. might yeah. change. Unless it has static information that doesn't change, the, the budget year doesn't matter. I think you're falling into the trap of too creating much stuff confusion. there and creating confusion. So yeah. well, we're committed to, to make this work. So Jody, let's, as well as with the other yeah. item, let's talk about what we can do for a review as far as putting up, we'll take it outside this meeting. Okay. Do we want to, are we also posting finance committee info there too, or is that still separate and separate, you know, you know, just it's budget? separate right now. It is separate right now. So we'll, we'll have to designate something coming out of our individual committees to go to that site. You know what I'm saying? We'd, we'd say, look, this is, we've come up with our goals. We want that in the budget document. So can we list it on committee and in budget doc? Well, like we said, right. uh, the takeaway right. discussion, maybe we do a quick little check-in. Anything we talked about or should yeah. be... I mean, there, there is actually, if you look at the portal here that he shows you, there's already an access point for boards and committees. So if, you click, so if you clicked on that, it would take you back to the finance committee. I'm just trying to, you know, if... Again, the one-stop shopping thing. All the data was on the internet or on the web last year. It was just in different pockets in different places. So I just want to be clear what information is going there. If it's going to be all the I'm not, I'm not suggesting no, we have to put all the finance. Yeah. I don't think you should. This is right. intended to be budget. budget. I think, right. I think yeah. budget okay. specific. Too. Okay. So then that, for me, the question is, if, we, if you here agree that it's going to be at or near 3%, is that something at the start of this process, the citizens might want to come here and see some of that information so they know the starting parameters. And then as you get into your budget processes, then they'll, they, they, they kind of have that in the back of their minds. And we certainly could post goals yeah, to it. Once the council's adopted, that would be yeah. good stuff. This budget schedule, once yeah. it's adopted, yeah. that's yeah. first thing going up on yeah. it. Um, Do we need some sort of protocol to decide, well, you talked about the two of you meeting about it, uh, to decide what goes up Going no. forward, or do, do we you know honestly want that, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that we this group, when this group sits together, want to go down through a list and say, put it on the website, put it on the website, or does that? Yeah, I think if in the context of this meeting, if there's something that comes up and is talked about, and someone says, "Wow, this would be really oh. good to put up," yeah. raise yeah. your hand, tell us to do it. So, um, if you like, I'd be happy to be the central point. If anybody who is sitting here or not here wants something specific, if you can send me an email on the town email. I'll start a list and I will forward it. I'll go over with it with Jody first, but then Jody and I can go to the manager and Kate and whoever else and say, please put it up. Yep. And then they can determine how to put it into the yep. document. Rather, that I won't do, but I'll at least help out and determine what should be posted. Yeah, well, beyond that, I hope you, you trust the superintendent yeah. and I and our staff to, to put the other stuff up too. I mean, uh, the intent is to make this robust and yep. everything, that, everything that's relevant is there. Okay, so on the budget format, that's really something for Kate to address. Yeah, I think it, we did touch on it briefly earlier. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the way that the budget was displayed and, and presented on the town side last year with um, some pretty nice narrative, some um, very helpful, I think, charts and, and um, a little bit of more descriptive material about each of the departments, what they're doing, what their tasks are, what their challenges are, what resources they're asking for. And, um, you know, halfway through that process, Tom and I had quite a few conversations last year about wouldn't it be cool if the school could do this. And my response was, well, yeah, it would be great because we kind of already are doing those things, but we're doing them, as I said earlier, we're doing them piecemeal. We have um, a set of goals that we operate on every day, but it's not necessarily in the budget document. We have um, an improvement plan where we're talking about the types of investments that we would need to, um, to make student teaching and learning better in our district, but it's not part of the budget document. So there are so many things that we could incorporate into that document that we are already working on that I felt like it would be a natural progression for that to happen on the school side as well. And I think it would be very valuable. So I, mean, I initially committed uh, to Tom to say, yeah, great idea. We've talked about it in um, school board finance. We've talked about it a little bit to the board just in, in report outs. And I've, I've definitely had 
several conversations with the leadership council, which is the school principals and, and department heads, about how they might help us turn that format around. And, and essentially, it's, it's what I just said. They're already doing that work. They already have that mindset of you know goals and pathways and targets. And um, I think for them, reporting out on that in a budget document is actually going to be kind of helpful. So That's great. we've definitely committed to that on the school side. Um, just so that you're aware of our timelines, I'll be meeting with all the school leaders between January 25th and February 5th, I think it is, the two weeks at the end of January, beginning of February, which is part of my normal process. Um, I meet one-on-one -on -one with everybody just to work on that level services piece that we talk about. And during those conversations, we'll be talking about the formatting as well, where in the past we just had the line item budget to talk about. So. Yeah, a um, cautionary note is um, some of your senior staff are capable of writing a novel. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're proud they want to tell you everything Amen. you want to know about their operation. That will be your biggest challenge is giving them some constraints and keeping them to, Tom, you, to those constraints. Tom, are you speaking from experience with this? Uh, a little just bit? That. Well, I'm very controlling. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. Um, They're in finance, right? <laughs> the only trouble is that I like to write novels, too. That's right. Um, um, so you're I might need to get one. <laughs> so, um, first, I just want to say thank you because it's really it's a nice progress to see that um, transition not only from, because I mean Tom and his staff really undertook a very quick transition to that approach last year, so it's really nice to see. There is, I think, a secondary uh, presentation or issue, and that is what is then presented to the public, because there are an extensive amount of financial documentation that are um, really important, um, but that's where a lot of people get confused because it's too much for the, for an average non-financial person to look at and then they get confused because on one line it will say one item and then they try to correlate it to another page in another report and why don't they equal. So it's a, I think there's also um, a, a desire to present a budget, the final budget, which is all of it together, in a more communicable uh, process. And I know other communities have been targeted, which by the way, when you look at those communities and you look at their public presentation, it's not the financial documents that we approve our budgets with. It's just it's a concise budget presentation, right. very different. So, th uh, so I look at it as two, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, the presentation is really two issues. One is kind of bringing everyone together in the same presentation initially, and then what is the final one we're going to then send out to the public? I think. Uh if I'm understanding you, I think that the way that the town's budget book looked last year when you received yeah. the book, it was pretty much the narrative pieces and the high-level um, conversation about what resources were needed and why up front, and mm -hmm. then there were still line item yes. materials in the back yes. so that when the finance committees are looking at it or the, yes. or the council or the board, they could actually go to an individual line item and, and talk about it. Sure. So are you saying that in the public presentation that one is more valuable than the other or that we should keep them separate or? Um, personally, and you know, we, we can decide this, um, I think that that narrative is great. <coughs> so uh, um, how do I want to frame this? I look at my role very differently than maybe some others, and so I look at it from an executive level. So I don't really focus on a line item within the actual budget, I focus on that executive summary narrative that provides me with a trend that says this is why I'm doing what I'm doing or why I'm recommending what I'm recommending and I make a decision based upon that and some higher level values. I'm not going to look at the number of pencils the department used this year versus last year. I think that's his job um, and Ruth's job. Um, but I'm going to look at the total number for the whole department and say is this the right direction, especially when we get into prioritization. You know, is it the right do we want to focus on public service versus education or public service versus uh, public works, um, you know, things like that. That's how I look at it. I think the narrative pieces are great to have as access for the public because those stories are good stories well, and they need the to get that. So you know, the string of numbers is meaningless. To no, but I'm saying that the works. financial statement itself needs to be consolidated into a readable format <coughs> that the general Q public can read and understand. And there are some communities out there including Cape Elizabeth that have done a job, good job at synthesizing 
you know, those budgets are that big, right? All the line items into a four case document. So you still well, get the line item, but you get it in chunks. But you, yeah, and you get it as part of a committee member. I, I really don't believe 99% of the public wants to see line items. I think that they want to see that bigger picture. I think what you're, you're, referring to to do. You're, I think you're referring to kind of like a balance sheet kind of approach yeah. that you've seen. Almost you, you, you have that in our accounting yeah. documents like our right now. Statement. Right, Rather where you just have the basic, yeah. you know, uh, assets, liabilities, tax revenue, simple. And if they want, you have the yeah. narrative yeah. of that, major department. Right. But I mean, it sounds like it's a, I, from what I've seen from Cape and some of the other ones that I've, I've, I've heard are, yeah. are, are easy to understand. It's just a simple balance sheet. I mean, on the, on the town side, the one department that they, I think the public wants to see more detail at the sub level, but not too far. I could see the schools. People, parents want to know how much is being spent on primary education. Or I'm sorry, on uh, you know K2 versus 3-5 versus what is it, 6-8, 6-9? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? So the, those type of you know, and then special education, and uh, you know, that's a little bit different than public works. I mean. I think generally public, they just want to know what's being spent on public works. I think that's you can have levels. You so can start off. That's me, so uh, well, um, I'm not trying to over influence what we deliver. It would be like deliver. having a budget that says town, a budget that says school. And if that's all, all the citizens well, saw, they want more information about yeah. what makes up town, what makes up school. And so you're breaking out the school a little right. bit more, I think, is helpful because we do that on the town side. And then what I think needs to go with that is how do we compare to the other communities that, generally speaking, everyone looks at and says, we compare ourselves to Gorham, Wyndham, Subport, well, you know, whatever, whatever they might be. I don't want to come on. Whatever they might be, they want to know where are we in comparison to them. That's what they want to know. They don't want to know how many pencils are going on, you know. How much but that I really information needs to be, be provided. If they want to look at and it, I think, I think what Kate and Tom have sort of worked out is it's going to be very similar yeah. to what Tom mm -hmm. presented, and I think that was sufficient. I think yeah. it serves two purposes. I mean, I think you've got to, it's like anything, you've got to take that layered approach, right? It, yeah. Some people just want the 30,000 foot view of how much, yeah. how much of my taxes going up, how much, you, how much of your revenues, how many, how much of your liabilities. Right. And that's a simple balance sheet you could put up there. And if that's all you want to dig into, then your, your needs are met at that point. Then we can keep going layers down until, I mean, obviously we're still going to have to post the line item budgets, not that anybody yeah. really wants to dig into them, but it should somebody want to dig into them, Okay, there. go to the website, it's yeah. linked here. Yeah, and I'm not um, saying not provide it. Right, I'm saying right. that for our focal points and our presentations, including the budget form, I want to be, I'm not going to show even a balance sheet. I'm going to show a graph of our balance sheet and whether that's comparing us to another community or showing us a trend over the years. That to me is a better story than giving them, here is the exact dollar amount in each of the lines. Yeah. That doesn't tell us. Yvonne, I think thing. to your point about how to, how to chunk it, um, my concept was to where you have public works, public safety, IT, administration, what have you, I would have high school, I would have middle school, I right. would have yep. special services. So my pieces are going to be uh, the same types of departmental breakouts that you would have. And I think it would give sufficient information yep. for um, each one of the people who are looking into something that's of specific interest to them. Because to me, the, question, the questions that come in for the forum should, a should ask or drive down what that big number is. So for example, in, um, I don't know if it's community services or public works, but maybe the question that comes in is, how much is being spent on beach cleanup? Because that was one of our big questions because of the red seaweed or whatever it was called. You know, things like that drives what type of questions that we can then answer for them. Because they're not going to know where to go within that budget, even on the line items, to be able to ask that question and find <coughs> that kind of answers. So that's kind of where I'm personally thinking. Yeah. And, but, I, but I think it's consistent with some of the comments that we've received, because there's other communities that were referenced, such as Cape Elizabeth, and how they did their presentation. I'm not saying that's the right way. I'm just saying that's an example. It's informative. Of right. And it's simple. And it's, okay. not the, it's not that line item approach. Right. I mean, what I was kind of visualizing when I, you know, in my prior accounting years is, uh, you know, a high-level budget might be, you know, here's the major line items, yep. payroll, this is how much it's, it's increased. If it's within some parameters, that's fine. If it really it is an outlier, then some type of footnote that just says this is because there's new contracts or this is because. So it's just, it just gives people just a little bit of information and then if they want to dive deeper, they can. Yep. Yeah. But it really teases it out for them and they can say, okay, I can understand that. It, it's a 10% increase in healthcare. That's not going to surprise anybody because healthcare is 
So that type of so level you get of detail. that cost drivers piece as well. Right. Kind of, well, yeah. I, and it kind I of explains for them, and then it then it can zero in their questions. They may say, well, what's happening with healthcare? And it gives them the form or some other way for us to be able to address it. Yeah. I think it's obviously something that we can, you know, get out there in a format that we think is good, and then we'll have to respond to the community mm -hmm. to, uh, as we go along. And if there's a piece missing or something that we should be doing differently, then luckily we have another budget process next year, yay. And, and, and one of, for me, one of the, I'm um, sorry, one, one of the longer term issues is, because this actually sets the framework for another conversation later, maybe this year on the council side, because we've talked about, I think it's called the smart cities concept, and then within that it talks about how do you enhance that budget process to have more community involvement, because hopefully you get, as part of that involvement, you get the ones that are going to ask the line item questions involved at the committee level. So it takes care of having to constantly, you know, do that on a regular basis uh, for different styles because everybody has a different style and wants to receive well, it in different. Or know. even at the forum. I mean, if right. you can if you can get public comment um, centered around right. a one day, you know, kind of, and I don't say end all be all, but a one day opportunity for people to really express their questions and concerns and get them addressed in a way that everybody under can understand, then it maybe that that prevents us from having to chunk it out in sporadic sections. You know. Other than the hundred, to be honest, no, <coughs> other than the hundred thousand dollar question, I don't think there was any question even at the forum that was more specific to a line item. Do you recall? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I really don't think there was. Uh, yeah, there was. But there were there were questions about laptops and things like that. Yeah, that's true. yeah. The laptop came. I mean, yeah. that was a separate item because right. yeah, that's true. Right. All right. But I mean, but yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's yeah, just no, yeah. you know, we. I, I don't. You hate to create work for people. To me, if there's something that we can take out of our existing audit report, let's say that's a better format or something we already have, that we can just you know grab and populate with the correct data and post up, and it's then it's less time that you guys have to run through and. I don't want to have to create spreadsheets for people just because we like fonts and colors and pretty right. things. I mean. Maybe there's something that maybe there is something that we can find in existence that we can uh, you know agree is the right information, right format, and you know have the narrative piece as well. But have the because the uh, questions I get are it, it, there's all the it, all the data is there, but it's too complex. There's you know trying to correlate line items, and when you start breaking down departments, which part goes to which department, and some but people I want that thirty thousand foot view of how much is the school budget? It's X. How much is this public works part? It's Y. Right, and maybe that's just a one sheeter at right. the front. Yep. But I think I think the move that Tom made last year to move to that narrative mm -hmm. was helpful. And I Absolutely. would hate to make make a knee jerk reaction to be like, oh no, we got to sort of change that. No, more. no, no. Because I, I think it worked well. I, yeah. I think it was. I'm not suggesting oh. at all. I think the narrative needs to be there because it sets the story for why we're doing what we're doing. Absolutely. But if somebody doesn't want to to, to run through the two and a half pages of narrative for whatever reason, right. and they just want to look at a spreadsheet. Let's have a simple balance sheet up front where if they if that's good or enough for them or a graph or whatever, if that's good enough for them, yes. great. Then they, then their their needs have been addressed and, and it's not extra taxing on staff. But if the narrative's there, I, I think that's great. It helps certainly helps me in the decision making process and it justifies why we're doing what we're doing. And back in the day it's there if they want we to literally it. went line item by line right. item by line and yeah. it was like Let's not remember those days, Sean. Let's not remember those days. It's like yeah. stick, I too thick in my eyes. I think a lot of what we're talking about already exists again. Exactly. Because, I mean, when we do the school budget, there's the 11 categories yep. voter summary, which chunks things into somewhat reasonable categories. Um, and, you know, there's financial statements that chunk things in other ways. So, I mean, it, it's not saying that we haven't provided that kind of thing before. It's yes. just putting it together in the right package that's right. useful. Right. And okay. the software allows for yeah, we a breakout of payroll, a breakout of supplies, a breakout I hear, of I hear horse crying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do we all sort of feel good We're about that too? Okay. And if you don't mind, I'll bring uh, works in progress back a little bit um, to share. Depending on how my time came goes, I'm yep. assuming that there will be some internal piece that I can get feedback on. Sean, just a quick, you know, as, as we think about one of the goals of the council too is around communication, and I think this is just a great start. Just setting yes. this web, web page, I, maybe up front, if we kind of couch it, saying we're we're moving <coughs> in this direction. 
we're going to try putting some things up. We really want your input to allow a space for input so we can get some feedback as time goes on about what's working well and what's not so yep. we can refine it for next year. I think it would be sort of a continuing sure. improvement process, which would be great. So with that, um, the question I have for, because we are over, um, what is the pleasure of the group as far as do we want to continue with the rest of this? Do we want to postpone this for our to begin the next meeting? What, what My thought is what if we um, skipped to F okay. and sort of had input from the group on what they'd like as sort of our main topic for the next meeting? And Right, so let's just quickly move to F. Is there one of, I feel like we could come up with a consensus <laughs> on, on what, what, what we want to talk about at the next meeting, and then this whole section can just be put onto the agenda at the bottom I like the again. first bullet. I agree, the first bullet. Yeah. yeah, I think it was, I think it's obvious for And so for the public that's watching, or will be watching, <laughs> That is uh, identifying the most relevant metrics for the schools and town organizations. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a natural first next step. Yep. And then the second part I'd put on is having common understanding of terms, because I think yep. essential services, I think, meant something different to every mm -hmm. single person you talk to. So I think yep. it would be really important, and maybe that goes so, on the web page. So could I ask, so I have already put myself out there to accept everyone's recommendations for the <laughs> website piece. I, have a I would know you I'm coming like down this pike. <laughs> would yeah. you like to be the lead on accepting anybody's request <laughs> for a term? So if you have a term yes. that we want to define, send it to Joey, and we'll uh, engage in whether it's something simple as Webster's Dictionary or yeah. if it's... Could that might be uh, some kind of an ongoing list, not just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Today, just today it could be that we're talking about essential programs and services, right. and tomorrow it could be some other yeah. word that right. came up. Let's just, let's just looking clarify these are budget words, right? Yes. So I think those two for the next meeting yeah. make perfect sense. Yeah. See, we can come to a consensus. That was easy. What are we going to meet for? So we'll, we'll also do the uh, E. The next one. Too. Yes, you will be the next one. one taking the lead on that. We actually have a follow-up meeting scheduled for next week. So that right, so I just felt like that was to. Uh, and if I could report the more consistency. And if I could recommend. Um, for the C pair thing for letter E. On so I think the kind of the goal by having these bullets is to, uh, as we accomplish them, is to take them off and then add a new one. Uh, based on the comment, somebody made a comment. We should add a bullet um, that is around cost drivers. Cost drivers and items in motion, I yep. think, is what I heard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's one thing or two. We had that last year, so that's the yeah. for weeks off to be able to have like, until Oh, no, no, I understand that. It's just, just to capture it and keep it. We'll keep yeah. prioritizing what we yeah. want next. Yeah. As, a as a future topic, at one point it was talked about multi-year budgets. Have we, have we dismissed that? Does that circle back in at some point as an expiration of concept? No, we can put it. Um, someone, I, I thought that was someone had mentioned that to try to we, well, we, no, no, we, we tried that in the school department a few years back when I was chairing the finance committee. Yeah. And to the extent that was possible, I mean, it's sort of like, okay, well, we know that these contractual obligations <coughs> are going to be moved forward because it's a three-year contract, so we know kind of these bigger items are like we do two buses every year or we try to do two buses one year, we shift into the bus, you know, minivan kind of stuff. It, it's very hard yeah, to do that because there are so many moving pieces and, yeah. you know, with the change in staffing and all those kinds of things. But I think I recall we were talking about because we had at our final yeah. committee yesterday, there was a question about the um, EPS funding formula taking a dramatic hit again this year mm -hmm. and we had talked about bringing the budget or the finance person from State. From the state, state and, and obviously that might be a op golden opportunity for another joint session. So I don't know if we want to try and schedule that and I'll put that on the agenda for the next time. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There. You know yes. Yeah. She just got a promotion. I She's the deputy commissioner now. Yeah. You know what they say: longer titles. <laughs> so yeah. So we had talked about because of. Uh, the question around uh, state funding, we wanted to understand oh. at least a council of finance that we want to understand it better as well. So we still don't understand it. Either. Right. Here. So we'll put it on as a future item. Yeah. So the, in the budget form, we'll inevitably 
be talked about at some point, just yeah, to yeah. kind of the fine tune, fine details, logistics of how. Well, the expenditures, the uh, expenditures, and the inclusion, new initiatives will have to come once the budget starts, right? So it's not really something you can take up right now. Maybe we do the state direct or the state funding piece before we get into any of those. But anyway, that's that's long term. So just to make sure, next week we're going to take the two top bullets. Yes. Okay, so okay. identifying terms and identifying metrics, yeah. as well as the next week there. Not next week. Right. Not next week. Sorry, February fourth. February eleventh. Oh, that's right. It's this second. February eleventh. Oh, we'll get more done. <laughs> no, no, that's only when I don't show up. <laughs> Public input looks like our interested party has left, so uh, it's just what's left remaining here. Any comments from the from us or the good of the group? Is there anything that we wanted to recap, or did we just do that? Um, the A's, one, two, three. Yeah. I'm okay with nothing. Uh, I mean, I've got um, personally, I, as chair of finance for the town, I've got a couple of things that I'll forward, but I want to sit down with Tom and make sure I have everything. All my eyes, be a Frenchman. All my eyes crossed and my teeth dotted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, move, uh, um, I'll move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Okay. The workshop. Oh, yeah. do that, right? Okay.